Well, if there's any speculation about us going undefeated, that's over now. Uh, I, I don't know what you want to talk about. We, we could talk about we got a little bit of a game tonight. We got a recruiting class. I, I, what do you guys need out of me? I, I'm here for you. I'm here to serve you. Go nuts. What is uh, Very athletic. They defend, rebound, and run the court very well. And those three things are really stand out on tape. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. You go, you go from playing Viterbo to St. Mary's to Southern Miss, and so you go from looking at tape that was like from a catwalk in the corner of a gym to watching St. Mary's play on ESPN to watching tape of Southern Miss and they're hosting CBS games. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's great for our fans that we're able to get this in here. It's uh, lousy for my stomach lining. What is the one thing, Coach, that you took from the game against St. Mary's that you guys need to improve on? I'd say one for 13 shooting from three. That one kind of just creeps out at me a little bit. Uh, it's funny, too. You know, you go from having an individual set a school record for threes made in a game to the next night 0 for 5. Uh, it happens in basketball. It's the, one of the great mysteries of our sport. I didn't think we got carried away in taking too many of them. I didn't think we took bad ones. I think we did, simply didn't convert. We also. We didn't defend anywhere near at a level, and I give a lot of credit to St. Mary's because we haven't had a whole lot of people do that to us uh, the last year and a half, but we didn't defend near well enough. And uh, again, I don't want to take anything away from what they did, but we had uh, maybe weren't as, I don't want to say not dialed in, that, that sounds like a lack of effort, but we certainly didn't execute as well I'm doing basic things like taking care of our driving line, managing gaps, uh, things like that. Uh, I think we're a lot of. I, I think we're excited going into the game. I, I think maybe some things uh, got by us. We got to tighten those down as we get along. I didn't ask you this yesterday. So how close is Carlin to playing to see the floor? Uh, he's close. I mean, he's he's physically he can play now. He's cleared to play. Uh, I chose not to play him in St. Mary's. I didn't think that was an ideal situation for him to make his debut in. Um, and Southern Miss is unlikely as well. But as we get along, yeah, we'll try to sprinkle him in one way or the other. He's got a, you know, he's been practicing for a week uh, and he missed the entire preseason. So quite honestly, he's, he hasn't earned those minutes yet. He's working on it and he will. He, I mean, the talent is there. Uh, but just getting the rust off, uh, understanding what we want out of him, particularly on the defensive end, uh, not making jump passes anymore. Those, those are the type of things that we, we work on with him every day. He's, he's going to be really good for us at some point. Hopefully sooner than later we could use his, uh, his athleticism. He's, he's a terrific athlete, and he's doing the right things. He's, given the injury that he's had, he's not behind schedule from my mind at all. I'm sure he'd rather be playing right now. Uh, we have to develop them, but we got to win games. And when you're playing against St. Mary's and Southern Miss back to back, that's not exact. And Western Michigan, who went 3 and 1 over the weekend. Then you turn around and play UND. Well, okay, that could be your first game. All of a sudden, you're, you're getting into this pretty good. The point is, we've got to get them in. I'd really love to do it by subbing them in when we're up 25. That would be ideal for me. It's the best team in your tenure uh, here to come to the BSA, the Southern Miss squad? Yes, without question. Uh, Statistically, I mean, you can go by any measurement you want. Uh, they were a bubble team last year that probably should have gotten in. Uh, they got a lot of guys back, but just watch them on tape. I mean, forget all the number stuff. I watch tape, I watch basketball for a living. These guys are really good. The pair out of Wisconsin, uh, coach, that you got. How uh, special are these? Their teammates. This is not the first time you've done that before to go that route. The uh, yeah, it worked out pretty well with Kading and Vandenberg as well. But you look at Showalter and Wiesenberg, and the recruiting's easy. Look for a bunch of guys that never lose games at a really high level of basketball and recruit them to be on your team. That's kind of the, the mindset there. Uh, you know, they, they're they very different. Uh, you know, I guess from, from an outside perspective, what roles do they fill? Wiesenberg would fill more of the Trayvon Wright type role in terms of length. Uh, 
you know, he can versatile defender can guard a lot of different people, stretch the defense a little bit. Uh, and Showalter, as far as pure shooting, is a little felt. You know, there's a little felt in there. Um, both of them I see tremendous upside. Both of them I see obviously the ability to play at a very high level. Show Walter as a sophomore got my attention. He had 24, I believe, in the state finals. Just came out, and that's pretty good for a sophomore. Uh, both of them come from a program that play in a way that I'm very comfortable bringing them in here. They're going to they're translate well to what we do. Um, I know their coach very well. I've known them for a lot of years. They're well coached, and uh, yeah, it's. It's exciting to add them. I, I hope they. I think they're ranked as a high school team, 13th or 14th nationally, uh, right now, somewhere in there. So they'll be very good again. And I, I it means a lot to this program to be able to pull elite t players out of neighboring states. It, it does. Well, these kids have a chance to play right away. Yeah, because of graduation. I mean, we're going to have minutes available and. Uh, I, both of them have a definite chance. Minutes are available. For all you potential student athletes out there, minutes are available. We still got scholarships. A guy like Felt is making shots, Saul. Can you do anything for him to run different sets for him, or, do, or is it just a matter of these? I think with him, it, it's always been a matter of mentality. Uh, you'll appreciate this. You ever read Golf's Not a Game of Perfect by Bob Rotella? You'd, you, you don't, yeah, you don't need to. You're a scratch golfer. I get it. Okay. Uh, I gave him a, a book on, and the whole thing is about trusting your swing that day, trusting your shot that day, uh, regardless of what's going on. Next shot, just turn around, focus on the next one. I, I think with him, you can see in his body language at time if he misses a couple. Uh, but then at the same time, I've also seen him be pretty resilient. I remember his, his freshman year, we were in a practice, and we were going against zone, and he got like six shots off in a short period of time. All of them missed, OK? And uh, the seventh one he hits, he turns around and goes, only takes one to start a fire. OK, that's a good mentality. He puts a lot of pressure on himself. He's that kind of kid. Uh, I'd like him just to trust the fact that he's one of the best shooters that I've ever coached. You know, And I, I say that. Listen, come watch him. We have a drill where you shoot threes for five minutes. It's called threes in five minutes. Uh, he can go through, get 86 shots off, and make 81. That the guy can shoot. So what else is going on out there? Well, you know, there are defenders at times that pose a problem, but he missed a couple that were open. He'll make the next one. I, I promise you he'll make the He's, he's got to. He doesn't have a choice. Uh, I'm certainly not going to ask Coach Bull how he deals with the kickers because I've seen that before. That's not pretty. So uh, I think it's a similar similar proposition. His shot isn't falling. Is that putting more pressure on your second unit to find it's going? Yes and no. You know, I, I don't think you ever want to be tied into it, it's Things are really easy when him and Trey hit threes. I don't think there's any question about that. But I also think we've won plenty of games without them needing to feel like they have to do it to win. I think it's magnified Mike's situation because he views himself as that hired gun off the bench. He views himself as, at times, if, the, if I'm not getting this done, how am I helping this team? And uh, you know, I, I've tried to point out to him that just with the attention you command from a defense, you're, gonna, you're helping the team. You've, people alter their defenses to stop him from getting threes off. That helps our team. That opens up other players. So you, know, you can't. You can't have your identity live and die with every rim out. It just you can't live that way. And again, it's, it's just because he cares. It, it is. I know this. One thing that won't help is for me to get right in his face and just yell at him to make more shots. That doesn't work in our sport. That's, you go headbutt a locker in football. You don't do it in basketball. It just doesn't work that way.